Hey guys, welcome to another Whiteboard Thursday. And this week we have a classic interview problem, which is how do you reverse an array in place? So let's see how we solve it. And also at the end, I tell you what problem I'm going to cover next week so that you can get a head start and try it out yourself before you watch the video. So let's get right into it. So basically I have an input as an array, right? So let me just write it down. I is an array and my output should be the same array, but reversed. Correct. Okay, perfect. So let me just go through an example and we'll go into the code after that. Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. So let's say I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's say I have these elements. The output, if this is the input, the output will basically be zero swapped with seven, mm -hmm. one swapped with six, two swapped with five, and three swapped with four, right? Yep. Which will then yield seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So actually this is pretty straightforward, just like I mentioned right now, mm -hmm. I can I can implement it. I just want to make sure that um, I'm covering all of the edge cases. So what can be some of the edge cases here? The array could be, the input maybe could be null. In that case, I just return null, right? The array, if it is empty, there's nothing to reverse, so I just return empty array. Uh, but beyond that, I can't really think of any other edge cases. So if you don't, are there any that, that come to your mind? I think they're good. Nice okay. Implementation. Okay, perfect. So let me erase this. And all we're doing is we are iterating on the array and we're swapping, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I have function, um, let me call it, reverse array, it takes in an array, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say array dot, or um, I can, I can um, establish two different indices, the start or the front and the back. So mm -hmm. let me just say front even before I do that, let me just handle the edge case that I just talked about, right? Mm -hmm. So I will say if not array, so basically if array is a falsy value, mm -hmm. um, return array, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's go into the meat of the logic. I will say front equals zero and back. And back front is basically the first index and back is then array dot length mm -hmm. minus one, right? So what I can do is have a while loop and throughout the time I'm incrementing the front and decrementing back and swapping the elements that way. Mm -hmm. So let's say, let me just erase this. Let's say I'm starting a while loop and the stopping condition would just be that while front is less than back, so anytime um, front is equal to or greater than back, we just stop right there. Yeah. And what I do is I perform a swap operation. Let's say for the swap function, I have a swap function, helper mm -hmm. function. I give it array, I give it the front index, in the back index mm -hmm. and swaps it for me. Okay. And then I say front plus plus and back minus minus and that's it. Mm -hmm. And after the while loop is done, I just return the array. Technically, I won't even need to return the array because it's doing it in place and the reference will still be there um, with the calling function. 
but as the output is the array itself, you know, I will, I will return it. Now, let me implement the swap function. Function swap, it takes in array, front and back. In this case, I will have a temp to store the value of the front. So temp equals array front. Mm -hmm. Then I will say array front equals array back. And finally, array back equals temp. And that's, that's pretty much it. I think this should give us the result, which is just reversing the array. Mm -hmm. And what about the time and space complexity? So the time complexity for this, as we are iterating through the entire array, basically it is n over two, but it's still linear, right? Yeah. Um, so the time complexity is going to be linear. I'm not really storing anything besides maybe a couple of variables. Mm -hmm. So the space complexity is going to be constant here. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And if you did, make sure you hit the like button below. And next week, we are going to cover a Google interview question, which is basically if you're given an array and each element in the array corresponds to an index of the same array, how do you detect whether there's a cycle in the array or not? So try it out yourself. If you want more details on the problem or maybe a text version of it, I've included it in the description below. Check it out, try it out yourself and subscribe so that you get notified when that solution comes out. And I'll see you next week.